Hello folks, this is Anthony from Honda Snowblower Enthusiasts. Uh, today I'm going to show you a great off-season project or an emergency project where you have to replace the belts and the impeller bearing on your Honda Snowblower. First of all, let me show you these belts. In the off-season, if you take off the belt cover, which is four little bolts, you can inspect your belts. This is your dry belt on the inside. This is your auger belt on the outside that drives your augers. Now, in the off season, you can you can make sure the, the I, I usually take the the boot off the spark plug. I don't and the keys off, of course. I don't want this to start and run. But you can you can move the belt and feel the underside for cuts. You can feel on the side of carts. If you if you see a if you feel a bunch of cuts and damage on the belt, then they have to be replaced. Uh, contrary to what you hear from a lot of shops and a lot of people on YouTube, you do not have to split the machine to replace the dry belt. I'm going to show you a little trick in another video on how to replace your dry belt. It takes only 15 or 20 minutes. You do not have to to take the bucket off uh, to replace the dry belt. But you do on your auger belt, and you also have to take the bucket off to replace the impeller bearing on the other side of this uh, auger uh, pulley wheel there. So I'm going to show you how I do it. It's really not that difficult. I'll show you step by step. First of all, before I put this machine laid back on the handlebars. I started the engine, shut off the gas, and let the carburetor uh, run dry. I also don't have too much gas in the gas tank, so I don't have to worry about that leaking. And uh, if you're doing a service on your snowblower, uh, you can drain the oil before you do any kind of uh, work on it so you don't hydro lock it. Uh, that's what the shops recommend. The Honda shops recommend you drain the oil. I just pull the, I pull the starter cord until I feel resistance, and that closes the valves. All right, let me show you how I take off the, remove the bucket on your Honda. I've already removed the augers, which I, you know, when I'm servicing a blower, we taking off the bucket. Uh, I service the augers also. Plus, it's a lot easier on my back. You know, the bucket, you know, the bucket and the augers, I don't know what they weigh, but I've done about 200 of these, and my back is starting to hurt. <laughs> so I take the augers out first, which I've showed in a couple videos. It's it's only 5 or 10 minutes. It's pretty easy. You take, a, take your augers out if you want to. You don't have to. And then what you do... You got it laid back here. Um, the first thing you do is to remove this, your shooter uh, worm gear from the bucket. Now it's it's held on with a 12 milli, millimeter head uh, nut. So just loosen it. You don't have to take it off. Just loosen it and pull it off to the side. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. The second thing you do is you remove your belt cover. You've got one, two, and on the other side, you got two more little bolts, and you can remove your belt cover. See? This is easy, right? So far. Now, you've got ten bolts holding the bucket on. I already took them out to save time. Here's your auger belt. What I do is I take a pry bar or a screwdriver. This is, this is one of your belt guides. And I just pry that off, pry that out a little bit so I can get the, the belt off, you see. So you've got you've got two bolts on the top. You've got three bolts. Let's see if you can see this. You've got three bolts on the side, one, one in the middle and one on the bottom on both sides. And then on the bottom, you've got two more bolts. They're just small 12 millimeter head bolts that you remove, okay? Once you've removed that, it's 10 altogether. Three on each side, two on the bottom, and two on top. Once you've done that, all you have to do 
is pull your auger belt off like this, like so, in the in the in the in the box or the bucket or the auger housing, as some people call it, comes right off. See now it's now it's off. Now you can take this out. Here's your impeller bearing, and you can inspect it. If you take the if you take the bucket off, I highly recommend you change this. It's about fifteen or seventeen dollars. Um, Six thousand and four two RS is the bearing. You can you can try moving the moving the race. This is a fairly new uh, bearing, actually. Uh, before this owner destroyed this. Uh, bucket with an ice dam as you can see here um, I sold him this machine too so I almost cried when he sent me pictures how damaged it was but this bearing is still good but most of the time I replace the bearing it's so easy to do you got three three bolts here from the on the other side you take them off and this this is the keeper take it off and replace the bearing you know, you'd hate to you'd hate to change your belts, change your uh, auger belt and your dry belt, which is it's if you're taking the, if you're changing the auger belt, you might as well change the 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 dry belt unless it's in excellent condition. It's really easy to take it off in this position. Um, you just loosen your belt guy down here on the bottom, and then this just pulls it just pulls right out. Like that, see, and then your 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 belt's off, see. So, uh, you know, if I take the take the bucket off, I usually put a brand new dry belt on, and then keep my old one as a spare. But in another in a future video, I'm going to show you how to replace this dry belt without taking the bucket off. It's it's not that difficult, fifteen to twenty minutes. But you know. If, if you if you're taking your bucket off and you're changing your your uh, impeller bearing and you're changing your your belt here, you can also do uh, you can also uh, inspect everything. You can inspect your your springs on your tensioner, your your cables. You can see they're a little bit rusty on this one. You've got four springs that hold your tensioner. Uh, that work that works the cables. This is your uh, this auger brake. You can check that too, and um, lubricate in here. Um, anything else you have to do, you can. It's easier to inspect everything with the bucket off on this side, and uh, you can check all this. Now, when you're putting the bucket back on. You have to. Yeah, what I do is I I I clamp my uh, auger cable. I mean my auger handle down. You want to clamp that down. This puts this keeps your auger brake out of the way. See, this is when this is the normal position, and it, and it goes up against your. Uh, it goes up against this this wheel and and and, and breaks your belt. You see your your auger belt. This stops the auger belt. It's called the auger brake. And you want this out of the way when you're putting your bucket back on because too many people will put this back on. And uh, let's see if I can show you. The auger brake is on the inside of the wheel. When they put the bucket back on, they put everything back together, uh, button everything up. The first time they use the augers this is scraping against this wheel here and making a racket and no, and they don't know what's wrong so this is pretty common too that people do this so you you push this out of the way when you put your bucket back on you make sure that the auger brake is on the outside of this wheel and it's really easy to to tell once you put the i'm not going to put the bucket back on i only got one hand here but once you put the bucket back on, 
you can look underneath. See right here, you can look underneath and make sure that your auger brake is is up against the belt, and it snaps. You can pull it out and make sure it snaps back. Make sure it's not hung up on anything. You want to find this out before you uh, put on put in all your your bolts and and tighten everything up you want to find out if there's any problems you might have to take the bucket back off or, excuse me if this is hung up or something uh it's pretty common to, for this uh to get hung up or you just want to make sure it's free so once you get the bucket back on you you make sure that this brake is against the belt okay and um and then you can then you can then you can install your bolts. Now what I do, you know, after I put the bucket back on, you know, I put the, you know, I make sure that the belts is 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 back through here and routed correctly. Okay, and make sure that it turns freely, that it's not uh, not hung up, not the belts not hung up anywhere. And what I do is I start all 10 bolts. I don't tighten them up. I start them first. And then everything, you make sure that everything's working right. You know, your belt's moving. And, and, your, and your auger brace not hung up. And then you can tighten your bolts down. Now, what I do is, is I, I tighten opposite bolts. I, I'll tighten this one. You know, it doesn't have to be in the specific order. But I snug everything down, you know, the top one, every all the bolts down. You got 10. I snug them all down first, and then I tighten them crosswise. Like I'll tighten this one, and then this one, and then this one, and, you know, then this one down here. And I just do everything crosswise. And uh, after you put the bucket back on, you can, you know, just do the opposite of, of what, we, what I showed you here. You know, you you can put your belt cover back on. What I usually do is I don't put the belt cover on until I've tested the engine. So I got the I got the uh, the bucket back on. I got put the augers back in and everything. And before I put the belt cover back on, I'll start the engine. And I'll and I'll try the augers. You know they should be nice and smooth. Of course, you know if you're hearing any clacking or clicking or banging or whatever, something's not right. So uh, I make sure that everything's smooth. And once everything's smooth, then I can put my my uh, belt cover back on, and then reconnect your your shooter your shooter uh, worm gear here, and. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I took the, well, you can see how damaged this is. I mean, I took the chute off. It's just complete. This bucket is, is in really bad shape. But I took the chute off just to make the things a little bit easier for the video. You don't have to take the chute off if you don't want to. But uh, that's basically how you you remove your bucket. So you can change your belts or you can uh replace your impeller bearing at the same time and you can inspect everything inside your tensioner and so forth so if you think this video has helped you please subscribe and ask questions if there's any questions i'll i'll, I'll reply in the comments any suggestions and i really appreciate uh all the support that i've been getting on this new channel thank you very much guys and gals and have a great day